which is uh, the interview with Professor Dolores gaffier Wyden. Dolores, welcome. Also from my side, uh, it's a pleasure to have you with us. Uh, Dolores is the chair of the ASF Stop Cost Action, one of the key contributors to the policy brief. So ASF Stop is, stands for Understanding and Combating African Swine Fever in Europe. ASF is a viral hemorrhagic fever of domestic pigs and wild boar. The disease is devastating for the pig production, causes massive loss of animals, and has a huge economic impact. It has spread from Africa into Georgia, further into the Caucasus region, the Russian Federation, the Ukraine and Belarus, and thereafter to Eastern Europe and further within Europe. The virus was also introduced into China and many other Asian countries with devastating consequences. Now, the main objective of the ASF Stop Action is to improve, integrate, translate, transfer and communicate knowledge of ASF in wild boar and domestic pigs in Europe in order to identify and apply effective approaches to combat it. Okay, so I think we've set the scene, Dolores. Um, and if we now look at the more the policy side, the policy impact of your action, uh, very broadly speaking, your action aimed to influence policy and legislation with the aim to contribute to the prevention, control and eradication of ASF. How did this work in practice? Yeah, and thank you for the introduction, Judith. In practice, we worked hand in hand with policy stakeholders. They were invited to participate at early stages already during the writing of the proposal to cost. The ultimate goal was to combat this disease, to stop the spread and to eradicate it. And this is done through the implementation of policies and legislation. These policies and legislation will of course be most effective and more applicable if they are soundly based on science. Practical examples, well, experts of the action provided information to policy stakeholders during the scientific meetings organized by the cost action and to which they were invited and they attended. National ministers were invited to open the launching conference of the action. The action made important efforts to involve and sometimes integrate policy stakeholders into the scientific and dissemination activities. Yeah, yeah, okay. Um, that's, that's very clear, thank you. And also a key success factor of your action is that animal health organizations, the European Commission and FAO among others, were invited to participate in the action. Um, it'd be nice to know what was your experience of working with these organization and also if the action has influenced their policies in any way. Yeah, well, to combat an animal disease of this international dimension requires a joint and uncoordinated effort of many actors globally. All of them should be brought together to the table. And our action created opportunities to meet and discuss science and to coordinate strategies. It has been extremely important to work together with the World Organization for Animal Health, the OIE, the European Commission, the European Food Safety Authority, EFSA, and the United Nations Food and Agriculture Organization, the FAO. And moreover, some of their experts were participants of the action. And yes, I believe the action has provided information essential to policy. For example, on appropriate management of wild boar populations, on epidemiological models of spread of the disease, on the most effective biosecurity measures, on surveillance and testing and more. A concrete example is the collaboration of the action with GARA, and GARA stands for the Global African Swine Fever Research Alliance, together with the OIE, STAR IDAS IRC, which is a platform for coordinated animal disease research globally and other actors. And together, a knowledge gap analysis and research roadmaps for African swine fever have been constructed. These have led to prioritization for research in the European Union with a specific calls to fund such research within Horizon 2020 and Horizon Europe. A practical example of how the action contributed to policy is the participation of ASF stop experts in working groups or panels of the European Food Safety Authority. 
EFSA. And EFSA is regularly consulted by the Commission in relation to this disease and others, of course, because our action was part of the African Swine Fever Working Groups of EFSA, we had a voice and an opportunity to respond to these specific questions and to provide recommendations, which were later taken into account for EU legislation. EU policy organizations have provided also important input to science, helping to focus on the most urgent needs and the major challenges. For example, the importance of vaccine development was often brought up by policy actors in the cost action meetings, in particular, the European Commission. At the same time, they had the opportunity to hear from the scientists of the action about the progress and also the main scientific challenges of the vaccine development. Another example of a successful collaboration with the European Commission is the participation of ASF stop experts at an event organized by the European Commission's delegation in Beijing and Star IDAS, which is this platform for coordinated animal disease research globally. The Chinese Ministry of Agriculture and the Chinese Ministry of Science, as well as several uh, senior EU delegates also participated of this event. And China is a country severely affected by African swine fever so the workshop highlighted the research needs and the major research activities going on in Europe and China. This workshop provided another opportunity for the ASF Stop Action to consult on the topic at an international level. Thank you very much, Dolores. Um, I think that's a very comprehensive answer, You're giving us some insight Sorry. into, yeah, into how you worked with the different policy organizations. And it's also, in fact, linked to my next question, um, which is about your actions MOU, your Memorandum of Understanding, which lists that enabling informed decision making based on scientific data um, should be one of the key objectives of the action. Could you elaborate a bit on the extent to which this was achieved? So would you be able to give practical examples of how the EU and um, perhaps international policy organizations have used scientific data produced by the action? Yes, um, African swine fever has spread to new geographical areas and new countries in Europe, and policy had to be adapted continuously. For example, on the implementation of new protection and surveillance zones, with restrictions on animal movements and other control measures. ASF STOP was a large network with 31 coast countries and three near neighbor countries surrounding the European Union. And the largest part of the scientific community working on African swine fever in Europe and the neighboring countries participated. Baltic states and Eastern countries were the areas where the disease first appeared in the European Union. So their scientists contributed with their own expertise and the practical advice on the control of the disease. And this information was very valuable for the countries that were still free of African swine fever. So their epidemiological data was extremely important because it showed how the virus was behaving in the European context and in its main European host, the wild boar. Yeah, indeed. And would it be possible perhaps to explain briefly how policymakers use this data exactly? Yeah, for policymakers, it is important to have access to the latest updated data. And it is essential to point out that the scientific data and the results that are presented by scientists in conferences or at meetings or in the European Food Safety Working Groups is shown much earlier than in the peer-reviewed publications. And in disease control, there is no time to waste. Also importantly, scientific results and disease control experience from the near neighbor countries were made openly available to the coast action meetings. And this type of data is often less accessible. For example, our action participants from Russia and the Ukraine presented their results, including data, which contributed to a better understanding of the epidemiological situation in the region. These presented a unique opportunity for the action participants 
active in policy to take on board the results and potentially integrate them into EU policy. At the same time, the EFSA action participants contributed with presentations at the action scientific meetings, thereby providing new data and a broader perspective to the research community. So as you can see, there was really a two-way dialogue and an exchange between the policy and academic participants of the action, which was facilitated by the fact that the action included both researchers and policy makers. Yeah, yeah, indeed. And can you um, explain to the audience in what way the action has made a key contribution perhaps to a particular policy? Um, for example, in policy regarding management of wild boar populations, studies by scientists within the ASF stop showed that attempting to exterminate the wild boar <laughs> populations was not the best way to control the spread of the virus. On the contrary, it caused a further dispersion of the animals, increasing the risk of infecting new areas. Also, eliminating whole populations was unattainable and unsustainable and simply said not realistic and not appropriate. So this is because the wild boar reproduces so well that they rapidly compensate with more offspring until reaching a high population again. So it is unattainable. Therefore, partly thanks to the advice provided by our action, EU policy addressed proper management of wild boar populations in the infected areas. Another example was a demonstration of the importance of human behavior in a spread to distant sites, far away from the infected areas. And this was likely related to people moving pork products, maybe a sausage or a ham sandwich or other infected materials, for example, by road, and then disposing these leftovers in nature. So wild boar consuming these leftovers became infected and a new focus of infection was started far away from the original focus. Partly as a result of our action efforts in demonstrating the importance of human behavior in the spread to distant sites today, you will see signs in resting or picnic places along the major roads in Europe stating that it is forbidden to throw away food in nature. Instead, wild boar safe garbage containers are placed out in these places. Another example of an ASF stop contribu contribution to the implementation of EU policy on biosecurity is the raising awareness of the EU regulations by preparing brochures on preventive measures for pig farms, biosecurity for hunters, on biosecurity for travelers, and some were made available in several languages. These brochures are available on the Actions website and they were disseminated by the Action participants in their respective countries, 34 in total. So at the national level and to the right target groups. Thank you. So indeed it was clear that the great geographical spread in your action um, contributed to, to having uh, this type of, of policy impact. Eh? You could, um, you could disseminate widely, let's say. Um, finally, we've come to our final question, um, which I'm going to ask you to address very briefly, perhaps in one or two sentences as we're running a little bit over time. Um, just to uh, hear from you, Dolores, what, in your opinion, are the key success factors to achieve policy impact? So do you have any advice for researchers and innovators that wish to achieve policy impact? Uh, yes, I do. Here, the key word is communication very good but unpublished or not well communicated science will have little or no impact. So cost creates unique platforms for science communication. Unique because it includes countries that unfortunately many times do not have enough resources to communicate and disseminate the results. And unique also because it encourages involving different disciplines. Cost also facilitates input from the international scientific community bringing them in as invited speakers. And the international overview is also important for EU policy. And also the other way around, giving policy the opportunity to communicate and explain the regulations in place. 
As an example, an expert of, from the World Organization for Animal Health was invited to explain how a policy of compartmentalization would be applied in practice, because it had been difficult to interpret. So bringing all these scientists together with policy stakeholders creates great opportunities for policy impact. Thank you very much, Dolores. Um, thanks so much for your insights, um, for, for all these very comprehensive answers, for the many concrete examples that you gave, which I think really showed that your action has um, made significant impact in, in various ways. I think partly also thanks to the fact that you involved action participants who had a footing in both research and policy. And also thanks to the great geographical spread, as, as was mentioned earlier, um, because it showed that, you know, some of the countries um, had to deal with ASF already much more than others and had to therefore develop more advanced methods that your other action participants could learn from. Uh, so thanks again very much for your contribution.